everybody, good to have you back. In this video, I want to introduce you to a new process, um, which is callbacks. You know that service, for instance, Amazon has it, some insurance companies have it, um, where you get the options after a certain time you waited in the, in the call queue to be called back by the next available agent. Creating a callback experience is very easy to achieve with Bubble Force, and in this video I quickly want to introduce you to the how-tos. Make sure you're already familiar with our input readers in general, because then it's gonna be super easy for you. So all you need is a queue, you wanna have a waiting music, and then you need an input reader, a switch note, and a prompt player. So how does that all go together? First, make sure you know at which point you want to offer the customer to have the callback. So first, create your application module, automatic call distribution. There is nothing special in here. Um, only make sure you have connected it to a loop waiting audio. That's the really important thing. Because on this little prompt where the customer hears the music, da -da 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 um, while they're waiting, you have this little action local event on your uh, looped waiting audio which says after a certain time you define it in a trigger where you say call duration or call uh, queue wait time is greater 300 seconds or I don't know how long you want to have your customers waiting ideally 30 seconds um, after that time leave the queue that is very important yeah it means that the music stops and it goes back up to the automatic call distribution and here you have an afterflow. So when the call was kicked out of the queue it goes right here and here comes the callback option. So the customer is in a call queue anymore, there's no way that someone is going to pick up the call right now. So the callback option is an input reader and in this input reader the customer gets the option with a prompt here, would you like a callback then plus one, if not well fine with me as well then in this case uh, just stay in the line. It's really easy because you only need to create an input reader with one variable. I call it callback option. You ha of course need to make sure to create a trigger that uses this variable and checks if, it, if one was selected. And after the input was, is done you go to the afterflow callback switch. In the little callback switch you create a trigger in here and a trigger and this trigger uses the trigger, the other trigger you created before which simply says um, callback uh, wanted is the input, is the variable is equal to 1. If that applies, if this trigger applies then go to callback acknowledge. Okay? If it doesn't apply, so if the customer decided to just stay in the line it goes back into the support queue right here. So the process is if the customer doesn't press anything, nothing happens, always goes back to the support queue, but if the customer did press the button, that's the important thing, where we come to our callback request, then the customer hears a little prompt saying, hey, thank you for the callback request. It's not even necessary, you don't need to put in any prompt here, but, but you need this module because you want to make sure that your agent receives an email the moment the callback is requested. I mean it doesn't need to be an email of course, you can also create an event in your CRM, but for the really basic um, example, the basic use case, that's what you can do. You make sure whenever a call hits this module, in any case, so always, send an email and yeah, that's just an example I made, customer requested callback, that's um, the email address and you can put in um, a message body. Of course don't forget to put in the calling number, um, so call from number. So now if a customer decided to have a callback in your email uh, inbox or your CRM, you will receive a notification and you know that you should call that customer back. Mm -hmm.